Hey guys, what's up? You're watching the EJ Tech Show with me, Sahil, and today we're going to be talking about the new Nokia 2.4 budget smartphone that's just launched in India. And look, here's what you need to know about affordable Nokia phones. They always offer two key features, great value for money and two major Android upgrades. The new Nokia 2.4 isn't different in those regards, but is all of that enough to compete with the likes of Xiaomi, Realme, and even Micromax? Well, let's find out. Okay, so let's first dive into the looks with the Nokia 2.4 flaunting an attractive unibody design. The back gets a textured plastic cover that feels smooth to the touch and also helps in ensuring that there's practically no fingerprint smudges. Also, it offers a good grip and doesn't feel slippery in the hand. I really like this blue color variant and while there are other colors available, this one is my personal favorite. Now, there's a dual camera on the back as well that gets a 30 megapixel primary camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Beneath the camera module, there's a fingerprint scanner, which is easy to reach and unlock the phone almost every time in my experience, so I don't really have any complaints in that department. I would like to have seen slimmer bezels on this phone for sure. I mean, that bottom chin with the Nokia logo really sticks out. And it would also be great if Nokia had opted for a hole punch cutout instead of this teardrop notch. But then again, this sort of notch is fairly common at this price point, and some people actually prefer this, so it's not too much of an issue. Apart from that, the phone is very sorted when it comes to utilities. On the left side, you get a SIM slot that comes with two nano SIM card trays and there's a micro SD card option available here as well. Right below that is a dedicated Google Assistant button which comes in really handy for quickly firing up the virtual assistant. Meanwhile, on the bottom of the phone, you will find a single speaker and a micro USB charging port. The USB-C port would have definitely been a welcome addition, but at least on the top, you get a headphone jack, which is fast becoming extinct on high and even mid-budget phones. Now, do keep in mind that this is a pretty big phone and it's not easy to use with one hand. It's also got some weight to it. But if you are a fan of extra large screens, then you're going to appreciate the big 6.5 inch 20 is to 9 display on offer over here as it's perfect for watching content. The screen gets fairly bright as well and shouldn't be too much of a bother when using outdoors. But FYI, this is not a 1080p panel. It only goes as high as 720p resolution, which means content on YouTube and Netflix is capped at HD and not full HD. This naturally is a limitation of being a budget device. A low-priced phone usually means low and hardware, and this does seem to be the case for the Nokia 2.4 as well. The Helio P22 chip paired with up to 3GB RAM and 64GB onboard storage aren't going to be breaking any benchmark records, but surprisingly, they mostly translate into a smooth performance. I didn't face too many issues with this phone when it came to handling daily tasks like live web browsing or sending emails or even uh, replying to WhatsApp messages. In fact, this phone even handled high intensive games like Call of Duty Mobile well enough, as long as you set the graphics to really low. Sure, some apps don't open up as quickly as they should and multitasking isn't as smooth as what you get on other high-end phones, but the advantage of having less powerful specs is that they exert less pressure on the battery life and the 4500 mAh battery unit on the Nokia 2.4 is pretty solid. I easily got two days with light usage and one day with heavy usage. The downside, however, is the fact that the 5 watt charging adapter bundled in the box takes around three and a half hours to charge the device from zero to 100%. In terms of optics, the dual rear camera clicks OK pictures for the price range and quality really depends on lighting conditions. In my testing, the 13 megapixel primary sensor produced somewhat washed out images and in poorly lit situations, the auto mode will struggle. So the night mode might come in handy after the sun sets. The secondary two megapixel depth sensor seemed to deliver better results and help in creating nice depth of field. There's also no dedicated ultra wide or telephoto lenses available here, but the camera software does offer four times digital zoom. The camera app is fairly simple to use and gives limited options in terms of different modes that one can select. But if you ask me, this is a good thing as it doesn't overburden the user with too many choices. The 5 megapixel front camera is decent, but nothing to brag about. Most selfies looked a bit flat, but the portrait mode added a nice amount of bouquet to pictures. Finally, let's talk about the software, easily the biggest strength of the smartphone. The Nokia 2.4 is a member of the Android One family that promises a clean user interface similar to what we see on stock Android. This means no bloatware, no adware, and a smoother performance thanks to less clutter. The disadvantage of this is that you get fewer customization options, which a lot of people like, 
but in my opinion, less is always better when it comes to budget phones like this one. Now it's worth mentioning that the Nokia 2.4 currently runs on last year's Android 10 operating system, but like I said at the start of my review, Nokia does guarantee two years of major Android upgrades and three years of security updates. So rest assured, you will see Android 11 making its way to the Nokia 2.4 in due time. Okay, so to wrap up, the Nokia 2.4, like plenty of other low-budget smartphones, makes several compromises in order to retain that low price point. But the good news is the fact that those compromises are very well balanced. You may not be getting the best performing camera or high-end hardware with this phone, but you are getting a well-built design, a solid display, terrific battery backup, and of course, excellent software support. For most people, that's more than enough.